former President Aristide had finally decided to give up power and leave the country um, voluntarily. And uh, that happened, uh, quite frankly, in the middle of the night. And uh, my team, uh, we, were, we were monitoring the radio traffic and also being in touch with the, the, our ARSO, our counterparts in, uh, in Haiti. And uh, we got the call that, uh, uh, that they were bringing uh, someone to us. Uh, it was very, uh, because the rebels were, were on the edge of the city, um, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of secrecy involved in how the, 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 the leadership progression would go in, in, this, in the city. And uh, so a very secret uh, move happened where uh, they moved, they, they knew the Constitution called for the, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court to be the next leader after the President leaves. And, uh, and, and they brought the President to us, uh, where, we, where we were at. And from that time, we took over the protection of the president and his family at that time. Uh, if, if my memory serves me correctly, with the Supreme Court Justice, it was his daughter, uh, her her husband, and her his uh, his young grandson. Yes, uh, that evening, um, we knew uh, the inaugura- the he would be he was we sworn in the next day. Uh, so we we're in contact with the the American Embassy and American Ambassador uh, to work out those times. And uh, when morning came, uh, we took the the president uh, to the to the America to the, the ambassador's residence uh, to prepare to make that movement uh, to his uh, his swearing in. Uh, well, we we made him to the first movement to the ambassador's uh, to the ambassador's residence. Uh, then we made we moved jointly if my real, we moved jointly uh, with the ambassador motorcade to uh, the swearing to the swearing in. Um, and that that was more, that was a, a much more secure movement. Because now, because we had joint motorcade, we had we had uh, another MSD team that we were operating in concert with at that time because they were protecting the the, the ambassador along with, in concert with his um, his Haitian uh, protection detail uh, that we have from the embassy. So that was a secure movement, and that was a large movement. So we did not expect any problems. Um, we moved from there to uh, I believe that was the palace where the swearing in took place, and then once that happened, uh, we broke away from um, from the from that, from that large, that large motorcade, back to our smaller motorcade when we left uh, the palace. Um, we uh, we left the palace uh, and uh, to to go back to the safe house where we were staying, and uh, we chose a much different route than we did before, because the streets were were so uh, were so relatively empty. We were uh, relatively certain that we were moving in such a way and maneuvering in such a way that we were not being followed. Because we were, then we, it'd, be, it'd be easy to t- easy to tell, and uh, so we were able to uh, make it back to the safe house uh, without any problems and uh, with relative certainty that we were not followed. And also, where the safe house was located, we uh, we we had we again relatively certain that if we were followed, we would have seen something. So you're back at the safe house, um, and everybody relaxes. Um. Well, we never really had a chance to relax because uh, if, if how the geography of, of how that safe house was, this uh, we didn't have full line of sight um, for, uh, all around us. I mean, you know, that's the nature of uh, having a house within a city, within a, a compact, compact city within uh, Haiti, that is. Uh, so we knew for certain that we weren't being followed, but when, as, as soon as we pulled up and as soon as... Uh, Paul Avalon, who was the, the agent in charge, or our, 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 our team leader at the time, as soon as he got out, and as soon as he, cra- he, he cracked that door and the president exited the vehicle and started to walk up the stairs, um, the crack of automatic gunfire uh, opened up on us. It, and it was a long, it was a long of uh, automatic gunfire. It was very close. Uh, we, can hear, we could hear it hitting, you could hear it hitting the walls. And Paul immediately uh, pushed the president. Uh, he, uh, since the president's movement at that time was moving forward into the house, Paul pushed him into the house. And uh, myself, Chris Belmonte, I was in the I was in the driver's seat of the the follow. I was driving the the follow car. Um, I exited vehicle uh, quickly. Uh, Chris and uh, uh, 
Ray took up positions immediately to try to identify where that fire was coming from to deal with that threat. <laughs> you know, we know it's just the four of us. So whatever decisions we're going to make at that moment have to be made now about what our future is going to be. Um, we, and, and the opportunity to call for backup at this time is just, as a, we said, we, just, we, just, we, know where the, we know where the other teams are at because we, left, we just left them. And uh, we know that we have to, to make a plan. The other thing that we have going for us is that where we're at, that safe house we're at, we know the geography better than anyone, anyone else at this point because we've already planned, continued to plan from the night before from when we received the, the president. Now, the house itself is not a fortified compound. It's not a fortified compound. The, the best thing I had going for it was really an, an anonymity. That's the best thing we had going for us. Um, so um, to, to sort of put this perspective, the, the, the front of the house had a wall. It's, it's, a walled, it's sort of like a walled compound, but the wall is not that high. So when those rounds started hitting, uh, it, was, it was really difficult to figure out where it's coming from because we couldn't see really see over, the, over that wall. But, you know, the, but the, the rounds are hitting the house. Uh, so... Um, very quickly, as uh, those those rounds are hitting, and uh, because and because I know what we have to do, and I also know I know what Paul's going to be asking for. Paul Avalon's going to be asking for very quickly here is what's going on and what are we going to do? And so I had to make a decision right there uh, as to find out exactly what is going on. Where is this fire coming from? As as much as, as, as sustained and it's it's it appeared at this time that it wasn't just. Uh, fire coming at us there was there was sort of like different shots you hear uh shots coming in our direction but then you started hearing other shots going in another direction so something wasn't quite adding up uh, uh for us but from our you know from a security standpoint it doesn't mean anything we still have to make decisions uh so ultimately i had to make decision whether or not to open that it's uh like i said that we had this this wall i had to make a decision to to position myself in such a way that i had I could be, I could have some concealment, but not cover uh, for what was going on. Uh, so I left. I um, opened the door. There was uh, the door out there. I opened the door and uh, pretty much uh, exposed myself to see what was going on, and exposed myself with my weapon so that if some, if if someone was there, I can. Oh, I knew someone was going to be there to address that threat quickly, and then and uh, move back away. Uh, as I opened the door, what I what I saw was is actually a gun battle between two separate entities that just coincidentally happened to be right in front of our wall. Uh, AK forty uh, AK forty sevens back and forth. I took my I took a look. I saw right away that these guys were engaged in each other. They had no idea who we were, what we were doing there. They matter of fact, I don't believe they even saw us pull up because they were completely fixated on on each other. Um, I didn't the nature of what what their beef what beef was with each, with each other, and so as I saw that, I quickly um, I quickly closed the door, and uh, closed the door and uh, and sort of and, and continue to back back up, and then at that time is when Paul comes over the radio, asks us wants to know a status report, and that's when I called over the radio and, and told Paul that stand fast, uh, what we have here is uh, as two other entities, no idea who they are, and they're killing each other. Which is fine with which is fine with me, because uh, we know right now for us we need to just stand fast. So uh, Paul, let me correction, uh, Chris, uh, Ray, Keely, Alves, myself, and uh, we we went ahead and took up positions about covering concealment uh, and continued to monitor the situation, monitored all the entry routes into uh, where our safe house was, and uh, Paul continued to stay with the with the president inside of uh, inside the residence. And after a while, the, the, sh the shooting sort of died off. Like a minute later, it sort of died off. And then um, things went back to normal. Um, if, uh, if memory serves me correctly, I believe, uh, I believe myself and Chris uh, then made a decision to go and uh, take a sort of get an after action of, so you get a better assessment of what we're dealing with there. Uh, we went back out the door again, together this time, and we were able to see um, there, were, there were dead guys in uh, the road. And um, and uh, pretty much it looks like the one side won and they left, and uh, so the fight was over. And so pretty much things went back to normal for us, and uh, we went back to the house and um, discussed uh, what our next steps were going to be. Uh, we made a decision that um, 
it's better for us to stay put and uh, not move around because uh, we probably end up bringing more attention to ourselves now after this battle. So we just stayed in place.